Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you're having a great hump day and that you are now over the hump, that it is now downhill. Uh, we got preseason football tomorrow night on NFL Network, and of course our Cowboys will be playing Friday night as well. So looking very, very forward to that as well. Um, I was, uh, you know, sitting here chilling and things, getting ready because primetime Phil and my buddy Brian is going to be uh, doing a live stream at 8 o'clock Eastern. So I want to get this done before that so that way I can check in on, you know, my, 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 my boys. Check on my boys. You know, I am literally like Papa Smurf here. You know, they call me the goat. Goat. I think they've all, all the younger guys have gotten together and said, yeah, let's call him the goat, like as an old goat. And he's just like really, really old. But I like to think of myself as Papa Smurf, you know, that these are all my kids out here talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Now, what I'm kind of interested in talking about right now is um, I saw this article by uh, um, Blogging the Boys. I'm sorry. Yeah, Blogging the Boys. And in this article, let me pop it up here. They're talking about the Dallas Cowboys defense, and they're saying that they will definitely regress in 2022, but not by much. And after reading the article, I, I'm actually going to counter it. You know, I love to argue. You know, believe me, my wife would agree that I love to argue and try and get the last word in. Um, I, it's an interesting theory. Um, in here, but the crust of it is reasons why the Cowboys defense will regress is because one, they played so well as far as takeaways that they won't be able to maintain getting as many turnovers as they did before because, you know, typically you have a team does really, really good with takeaways. It's hard to replicate that because those are more of being opportunistic. Second point of contention is we'll be facing better quarterbacks. Um, you know, because we'll play Aaron Rodgers, of course. We'll play Tom Brady. Uh, I guess they think Jalen Hurts is going to be better, and Carson Wentz will be facing twice. So they're saying that, of course, that the competition that we'll be playing will be better and will be harder to, you know, basically feast on. Okay. Um, reasons they had to be optimistic was of uh, all the players that we have, we're bringing back so many of them. Uh, another one of the reasons why they had – uh, we did so well was we had three players that were in the top tiers of pass rushing with, between Micah Parsons, uh, D law and Randy Gregor. Randy Gregor was actually that was, was the least rated of the three. Um, but again, a, a big spot that we lost. Um, when you looked at guys like Keanu O'Neill and um, uh, Demontre Kazee's were players that we lost as starters. Um, really, when you think about it, they were losing more and more playing time as other guys developed. So, I mean, that's a good premise to say, you know, the Cowboys would probably take a step back historically looking at the numbers. But I'm going to give you some reasons why I believe that the Dallas Cowboys defense will actually be better this year. Um, here's where I look at it and say, uh, the fat boys are back. You know, there's the old saying of guilt by association. You know that, that, you know, literally because you're around people, you are guilty because you were around them. Well, if we take that same philosophy and we think about um, having great players, when you have a great player on your defense, it makes everybody else better. For example, I'm not sure that Jordan Davis is as great as everybody thinks. Because when you look at all of the other players, there were, I mean, uh, was that a record of guys that were drafted off the same defense? When you're playing with a lot of great people, everybody looks great. Everybody looks great then. Okay? So, um, and I'm not saying that he's not a great player. But, you know, if Alvin Harper ever meets me, I'm sure he's going to bitch slap me because I always use him for an example. But Alvin Harper looked like he was a hall, headed to the Hall of Fame when he was with the Cowboys because he was a piece of, a, you know, of many cogs that were all good. When he went to a team where he was, had to be the piece, you were exposed to realizing he wasn't as good as you thought. So you've got a Micah Parsons who's incredible. He's going to make everybody else better because he looks to be not regressing. 
he looks to be even better than he was last year. First half of the season, he was good. Second half, he became great. It's looking like that first half of the season we had last year, he's taking off from the great, in which case he should have a better season. Something that's not talked about very much is Demarcus Lawrence missed like seven games last year with the fractured foot. But on top of that, Demarcus Lawrence in the offseason had had back surgery and was on the pup list to start training camp. So he didn't get all that working in in the offseason. For the first time in many, many years, Demarcus Lawrence was able to do the captain's workouts, to do all the OTAs, to do all of the work and not be on the pup list. He should be starting off actually really, really good. And if he can stay healthy, you're looking at him being better and more impactful than he was last year. Okay. Yes, we lost Randy Gregory, which is a big loss. But I believe the Cowboys may make up for it for by having so many good pass rushers. Okay, not great ones, good ones. You have Sam Williams, who's very raw. We've all seen the clip of Sam Williams literally bull rushing the tackle right past the quarterback. That's one of those things that <coughs> he rocked the tackle. That was when his time, he should have just thrown him away. Disengaged, and now I'm hunting for the quarterback. Instead, being rookie, being you, new, being raw, he ended up just pushing him past him. Got the quarterback off the spot, in which case the quarterback didn't do anything, but it should have been a sack, you know, possibly fumble. He will get better as the season goes on, much like Mark, Mike Parsons did. Um, we look at a Dante Fowler and a Terrell Basham. These guys have actually looked really, really good. And then you've got a Dorrance Armstrong and you've got a uh, Golston. The production from Andy Gregory can be made up by these guys simply by having wave after wave of them being fresher later in the game. Okay. Most importantly, how I look at this defense and say it's going to be better is we're not starting off the year with Jalen Smith at linebacker. Anthony Barr and a healthy Leighton Van Der Esch far away is better linebacking core, better linebacking core that we started the season with. Of course, we jettisoned Jalen Smith in the middle of the season and, you know, moved on from him. The biggest reason why I believe this defense is going to be better is the fat boys, the big guys, the big beef in the middle. When you think of Carlos Watkins last year was one of our best defensive linemen, and Carlos Watkins actually started the offseason listed basically as the number one guy. Carlos Watkins may be cut. That's how far and away better this Dallas Cowboys defensive line has gotten that the guy that you had that was one of the number one guys is literally about to be cut. Tristan Hill, you know, you know, some people may still be skeptical about him. You know, we saw him get pancaked uh, the first padded practice by Tyler Smith, but we're going to see a lot of people pancaked by Tyler Smith. But since that time, Tristan Hill has been unblockable. But it's not just about Tristan Hill. Last year we had Brett Urban was another one of our best offensive linemen until he ended up messing up his shoulder and arm and got put on IR. Navelle Gallimore, who was a guy who had a lot of promise going into last year, hyperextended his elbow um, in a preseason game and didn't play until like the last five games of the season. He is truly a pass-rushing beast. The Canadian bulldozer. Lavelle Gallimore, we've seen him truck Mike Pouncey a few years ago, and I think that was what led to Mike Pouncey saying, I think it's time for me to retire. 300-plus pounds, he's got a motor, he's got an attitude, he is big, he is nasty, and he's going to be able to put pressure. Now, John Ridgway is still very raw. Um I don't think John Ridgway right now is playing as good as Quentin Bohannon. I think Quentin Bohannon is actually listed second behind uh, Navel Gallimore. Quentin Bohannon, another really big wide body that they can put on the line. When they do the 3-4 defense, they can literally put 1,000 pounds of defensive linemen between the three on the line. 
And if you look at the first two preseason games, the Dallas Cowboys have been great at stopping the run. I don't think they've given up 100 yards total in the first two games in preseason. So if the Cowboys can stop the run, make more teams one-dimensional, that's going to help the defense be able to get more takeaways. And now that the Dallas Cowboys actually have a really good pass rush, uh, guys that are in there, we've already seen, I believe, three takeaways in the first two preseason games with our backups. We've seen Tristan Hill being able to be unstoppable and literally being able to swipe the ball out last week. We've seen a couple of interceptions. The Cowboys still will be very, very aggressive on defense and having this pass rush and being able to now use Micah Parsons a lot more on the line because now you've got an Anthony Barr. Our defensive line is markedly better than it was last year. Our linebacking core is markedly better than it was last year. Our secondary is still really, really good. And you look at a guy like Joseph Hooker, who, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker, who is actually getting back to his form back from when he played with the Colts um, after last year being coming back from injury. You look at um, J. Ron Curse, who now has been the field general, who now has the subtleties that all of these things should make the defense better. But I'm going to tell you, actually, the other reason why this defense can be better. Now, the way this article also goes through, it says, well, of course, the Cowboys' offense won't be as good, in which case the defense will be have to play differently. I'm actually going to dispute that because, see, I believe, and again, this is just my own you know, personal thoughts and stuff. The way I'm going to compare this team to what I envision it being will be more like the 2013 Seattle Seahawks. <coughs> Instead of this being high-flying three wide outs, <coughs> excuse me, three, four, five wide outs, and, you know, just chucking the ball deep, this is going to be a ball control offense. If you think about where the Cowboys were in 2014 when Tony Romo was coming back from back surgery, they relied on the run of DeMarco Murray until Tony Romo was actually better. And what they were able to do was chew up the clock and protect a defense that wasn't very good. They were 19th on defense, like here, which the year before they were 32nd. If the Dallas Cowboys do like I believe and use a lot of 12 personnel and get the ground game going, they're going to eat up a lot more clock. They're going to be able to go down and score. Other teams are going to have less opportunities with the ball because the game has now been shortened because of the offense. And then it's going to be that teams are going to look at this and say, we're not going to have much time. We've got to hurry up and try and score, in which case they will be passing the ball more. If you know a team has to pass more, then you can throw wave after wave of defenders at that offense. And the Dallas Cowboys are deep. When you start looking at this defensive line, when you start looking at the edge rushers, when you think that between Osa, Navelle Gallimore, Tristan Hill, Carlos Watkins, Quentin Bohannon, that you have a lot of guys and fresh bodies you can throw in there. You start thinking about the edge rushers, of course. You've got Dorrance Armstrong. You've got Terrell Basham. You're going to have Goldston. You're going to have Sam Williams. You're going to have Demarcus Lawrence. And you're going to have... Of course, Micah Parsons will be the wild card who teams are going to literally have to say, where is Micah Parsons? Because that one guy can destroy us. And when you're focused over here, as I said, guilt of association, it makes everybody else better because you can't double team everybody. And this is why I believe the Dallas Cowboys defense is not going to regress. In fact, I believe that you're going to see this defense become one of the top five defenses in the NFL. So, you know, that's my argument against blogging the boys article on why the Cowboys defense will regress. I think it's going to go in the other direction. As always, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies. And as always, I'm going to keep sticking in the back of my boy, Philly 500.
You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't Hurts. handle the, the truth! Hurts! The pass! Throws! Pick! Horrible pass. Oh my god.